resistant disease and from an autoimmune reaction. And it, this is started or triggered by an infection of group A streptococcus. Streptococcus, and the pronounced that. Many parts of the body may be affected and almost all of the manifestations resolved completely. So you have to take note of this because this is important. Of all the manifestations, it will be cardiac valvular damage that will persist. So whenever there is a valvular damage, it will persist. Okay. This is mainly a disease of the children. The, the patients are commonly affected between 5 to 14 years old. But uh, some of, let's say, if you are 20 to 30 years old, puede cutting my infect, but less likely. Now. It's so rare to have an, a first-time infection beyond 30 years old. So if there is like severe mitral stenosis from rheumatic heart disease at 35 years old or 40 years old, baka hindi yan start at that moment or at that time, baka noon yun between 5 to 14. So you have to ask the patient regarding the history if nagkaroon ba siya ng sore throat, high grade fever, and then joint pains, uh, ganong history. Recurrent episodes of acute re re uh, rheumatic fever remain relatively common in adolescents and young adults. Meaning to say, nagkaroon siya ng uh, rheumatic fever at 5 to 14 years old, and then Kaya kung ma-admit siya because of similar manifestations at more than 30 years old, recurrence lang siya, hindi siya like first time. I hope uh, it will help you. So the organisms, uh, kailangan kasi malaki-laki yung inoculum na ma-infect sa'yo or you are exposed to it uh, parang regularly. Kaya this is common in a place na dirty or crowded area. Kasi kailangan parang you are being exposed to this infection against group A streptococcus. And there are serotypes of this bacteria. And these are the serotypes that are particularly prone to have, let's say, um, rheumatic heart disease. You don't need to memorize the serotypes. Kasi hindi naman, it will not come out. Just memorize the serotypes. That's important. In a strain of group A, group A streptococcus, potential to cause acute uh, rheumatic fever. So, 3 to 6% of the population is susceptible to acute rheumatic fever. And hindi siya, not all people who are infected with acute rheumatic fever will have carditis. And then, um, because siya, the bacteria has also to trigger an autoimmune reaction. Without triggering this autoimmune reaction, you will just have the manifestations of, let's say, sore throat, fever, carditis. So it has been found out that there are particular genetic involvement of the autoimmune disease, meaning there are people who are predisposed because in a study among um, monozygotic, monozygotic twins, about 60% have been found to have uh, a risk towards having carditis, only about uh, about 20% kung uh, dizygotic twins. So, yung high level of expression of a particular alloantigene, like B cells, it has also been found out to be of high risk. So, you don't need to memorize this D817, something like that. Just know that there are three factors for a patient dead and uh, among the genetic factors yung ano siya, yung itong so, so so immune response it's the m protein and the n acetyl glycosamine that is targeted by group a streptococcal infection so this cross reactive epitopes epitopes is the risk for you to have an infection kasi yung um if, let's say, the, the valve kasi and the myocardium has this M proteins and has this N acetylcholine, and if, if our body, antibodies will produce, um, and, and if our body will produce antibodies against the M protein and N acetylcholine group is streptococcus, it will also target cells with this particular M protein and N acetylcholine at 
napakaraming cells sa ating katawan have this M protein and N acetyl glucosamine. And that's why it's a multi-system disorder. So if you look at kung nasan ang chapter ng acute rheumatic fever, it's not part of the cardiac uh, chapter. Hindi rin siya nandun sa infection, kundi nandun siya sa uh, rheuma, ano, yung mga rheuma, rheumatology na topic. Say it's this is a an autoimmune disorder, okay? Uh, M protein and N acetyl glucosamine is very important. Thirst to have carditis, meaning the environment, na it's dirty, it's crowded. Kaya nga sinasabing acute traumatic fever is a disease of the poor. Kaya if you have let's say carditis or disease mitral stenosis from rheumatic heart disease, you belong to probably the poor people. Anyway, so you need to, you need, uh, there must be an environmental factor and then there must be a host factor plus a genetic factor. All these three come together for a person to have carditis. Now, hindi lang kasi uh, one infection. Uh, most of the time, there are several or current episodes of infection of acute rheumatic fever before a patient develops carditis. So ulitin ko lang, even if you have rheumatic fever, it will resolve completely. But once you have carditis, that will be permanent, okay? That will, um, all the manifestations will just go away except carditis. Okay. So latent period is about three weeks. Yung Korea at saka indolent carditis, sometimes it's six months. Uh, report of prior sore throat. The preceding group A streptococcal infection is commonly subclinical. Okay. And 60% progress to rheumatic heart disease. Napakalaki. And that's why uh, because pag magkaroon ang pasyente ng rheumatic, acute rheumatic, 60% would progress to rheumatic disease or the carditis part, which is permanent. That's why we give prophylaxis. So, ibig sabihin, uh, you give antibiotic at, for this admission, let's say seven days or uh, as outpatient for the acute infection. And then after that, you continue antibiotic for a period of uh, years. And we will talk about that in the next slides. Okay? Because 60% would progress to rheumatic heart disease. Okay? Endocardium, pericardium, or myocardium can all be infected. This is the, what we call as carditis. So if there is carditis, um, the, the hallmark of rheumatic carditis is valvular damage. And the most common valve involved is mitral valve. This is followed by aortic valve. This is followed by tricuspid valve and rarely pulmonic valve. So kailangan niyo siyang memorize. It is common to have double valve, meaning... Uh, both mitral and aortic valve affected. Hindi siya like isang valve lang, palagi lang mitral stenosis. Sometimes it's uh, like mitral stenosis plus mitral regurgitation. Most of the time what I see initially is uh, mitral regurgitation and after how many years there's development of mitral stenosis. Okay? So early valvular damage uh, leads to regurgitation. Ito yung nakikita natin sa admission, regurgitation lang because yung stenosis happens like how many years? The current episodes, leaflet thickening, scarring, and calcification will lead to valvular stenosis. Okay, ulitin ko, 60% um, would reach would disease, and that's why we give secondary prophylaxis. And there can be carditis, but the hallmark is valvular damage. The most common valve involved is mitral stenosis or mitral valve, followed by aortic valve, tricuspid valve, rarely pulmonic valve. And then initially, it regurgitation. Eventually, there will be stenosis. Okay. Uh, characteristic manifestation of carditis in previously unaffected individu individual is mitral regurgitation accompanied by an aortic regurgitation. So, um, to the echo, what I see is mitral regurgitation. And if there is an aortic regurgitation, it would hint me that it's abnormal, it's pathologic, because Mitral regurgitation, a trivial or mild, can still be physiologic, meaning normal siya. But an aortic regurgitation is always abnormal. At a young individual, less than 40 years old, pag merong yung aortic regurgitation to the echo, that is pathologic. So it will guide me that 
If there's aortic regurgitation and a mitral regurgitation, this is pathology. Ang problem lang, if just mitral regurgitation are mild, so it will be difficult for me to assess kung rheumatic heart disease ba to because uh, common naman ang kakaroon din ng leaflet thickening. So that's why we have to correlate it clinically. Is this patient having fevers or throat joint pains? Then uh, we can conclude that it's probably a carditis. Okay? On ECG, what is um, naman like common, but we see that like there will be PR interval prolongation. Um, this is because of the inflammation of the AV node. And so the AV delay of less than 200 milliseconds will be, prolo will be longer. It will be like 230, 250. So common yung first degree AV block. And this is sometimes yung ECG findings lang in acute rheumatic fever, first degree AV block. So if there is first degree AV block on ECG in a patient with acute rheumatic fever, this is already a sign of carditis, okay? So there is sometimes softening in the first heart sound, but at your level, this is going to be difficult, okay? Most common, this is important, that the most common clinical presentation is both polyarthritis and fever. Hindi siya polyarthritis lang, hindi siya fever lang. So it's polyarthritis and fever. It accounts for 60 to 75% of cases. Now, carditis is about 50 to 60%. Korea is not, is less parang hindi siya ganun ka. Actually, hindi pa ako nakakita ng Korea. Nakita ko lang siya sa, sa YouTube. Ganun. Before the board exam, tinitingnan ko siya. Pero in clinical practice, hindi pa ako nakakita ng Korea at saka irritate yung margin natin. Okay? So, Korea is about less than 2% to 30% and irritate yung margin natin as well as subcutaneous nodule is less than 5%. So, the joint involvement, it, there will be arthritis. So, magkaibang arthralgia at saka arthritis. Arthralgia is like pain, but arthritis, there are the signs of inflammation, robor, dolor, palor, Dolor, so dapat alam nyo na yan. And this is characterized as migratory. Ibig sabihin, uh, one, this hour, yung knee, right knee. After two to six hours, yung left knee naman. And then after how many hours, yung right elbow. So it's migrating. Nagre-resolve yung isa and then nag nagiging painful naman yung isang joint. And it usually affects the large joints. And this is very painful. So if there is a patient with a fever, that would be difficult to differentiate to chikungunya. May harapan tayo mong differentiate yan kasi joint pains din ang chikungunya. But ang chikungunya kasi sabay-sabay lahat ng joints. Ito kasi pa isa, isa So somehow it will help you if, if the history, if you can dig in on the history that the joint is migratory. Ang nagiging problem lang is that the polyarthritis in acute traumatic fever would easily be relieved with and sets. Pag bumili yan ng ibuprofen sa tendera, mawawala na yung pain. So, mahirapan ka na sa history mo. This is something na can we, can we can easily differentiate from other path uh, pathology. Chikungu niya kasi hindi masyadong pabalik-balik yung pain. Okay? Highly responsive to insects. Yung yung uh, polyarthritis in rheumatic fever. Arthralgia is just like pain, but at the same time, it will also be migratory in pattern. But arthralgia is not common. What is common is polyarthritis, so I hope that is clear. So side in Hams Korea, this is something that I have not seen. So it's, I don't know, there is a characteristic darting movement of the tongue and then the upper limbs. So it's generalized or restricted to one side of the body. This is like a uh, subacute, more with it can happen like after six weeks, indeed, during the one week of, of the fever, and later. Pa siya. So, erythema marginatum is a pink macule that clearly centrally leaving a serpiginous spread, spreading edge. So, evanescent siya, pawala wala. Actually, I have not also seen this in, in my clinical practice. Kasi, Oh, wala na siya. But, wala, wala but uh, as described in the book, it's appearing and disappearing before the examiner's eye. It's the same way with subcutaneous nodule. It's painless, it's small, and these are seen on bony prominences, hands, feet, elbows, occiput. I also have not seen this on, on my clinical practice. Uh, fever.
occurs in, in most cases, and that's why it's the most common manifestation together with polyarthritis. It's high grade, but sometimes it can also be low grade. And if you request for an ESR or CRP, it will help you uh, identify patients as having an inflammatory condition. There can be a mildly elevated peripheral leukocyte count with neutrophil predominance. Okay, you need to have an evidence of a streptococcal infection. In order to diagnose patients with acute uh, rheumatic fever, there must be an evidence of a streptococcal infection. It's either, it's either there is a culture on sore, sore throat, uh, sore throat or like a culture, a throat swab, a positive culture and throat swab, or an ASO or an anti dns B titers. So take note, a previous streptococcal infection, you need a sore, uh, a throat swab culture, an ASO or an anti-DNA titer. An ESR or a CRP is not, uh, this is not part of a previous streptococcal or an evidence, evidence of a preceding group A streptococcal infection. I hope that is clear. So it's post-streptococcal reactive arthritis is differentiated from acute rheumatic fever because uh, this affects small joints and then it's not relieved by salicylates. So yun lang, that's how you will uh, differentiate it. In children, we can say pandas, but never mind because sa adult naman tayo. Okay, these are the clinical uh, diagnostic criteria. We can say that the patient has primary episode. We can say that this is a recurrent attack, or we can say that this is a recurrent attack of rheumatic fever in a patient with established rheumatic heart disease. Because for example, in my clinical practice, I see patients, let's say 40 years old, pag to the echo, merong rheumatic heart disease with moderate, uh, moderate ano, uh, mitral stenosis. And then, if you fever ngayon, you have to check if this is a recurrent attack because you need to give antibiotic for that. And then the secondary prophylaxis will also matter. Okay, kasi pwedeng yung fever niya at this time is galing sa pneumonia or other problem, not because of, not because of uh, group A streptococcal infection. So you need two minor manifestations for this plus evidence of preceding group A streptococcal infection. And that is, if the patient has a positive throat swab before, currently if you have a positive ESO or a positive anti-DNA test. Okay? Chronic valve lesions of rheumatic heart disease, you don't need um, you don't need other criteria. You don't need fever, polyarthritis, sidenhams chorea. You don't need that. As long as onto the echo, there is rheumatic heart disease. With, uh, there's mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation that is of rheumatic heart disease in origin. Agad-agad na siyang malilabel na rheumatic heart disease. Naintindihan niyo ba yun? Kahit wala siyang fever on this admission, kahit yung uh, pagka-admit niya ngayon is, let's say, nag-vehicular accident siya and then to the echo, nakita kong merong rheumatic heart disease with moderate mitral stenosis, agad-agad na siyang RHD. You don't need other manifestations. All right. So, in order to diagnose a patient as having acute rheumatic fever, you need to have two major or one major plus two minor. And take note, this is... Uh, important na ma-memorize na yung Jones criteria. So, major criteria. Yung iba, ang mnemonic is cases. Bahala kayo kung paano ko yung gagawa ng mnemonic. Yung sa akin kasi is cases like carditis, arthritis, pero yun yung polyarthritis. Arthritis, chorea, erythema, marginatum, and subcutaneous nodule. You need two major. So, kung merong yung, kung merong yung ano, fever, it's a minor. So, take note of that. Polyarthritis is a major criteria, while fever is a minor criteria. These two are the most common manifestations. The minor manifestations are fever, polyarthralgia, and take note, ESR is a minor criteria, and this is not an evidence of a preceding streptococcal infection. This is just an evidence that there is an inflammatory process going on. Another minor, 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 another minor manifestation is an increase in leukocyte count and a uh, first degree blood from ECG. So if there is just one minor polyarthritis, you need 
two, uh, if there's just one major, you need two minor to say that the patient has a traumatic fever. Now, all this one major, two minor, or two major plus one minor, kailangan merong supporting evidence of a preceding streptococcal infection. It's either a positive throat culture, an ASO, or a rapid antigen test of group A streptococcus, or merong nagkaroon ng recent uh, scarlet fever yung pasyente. Okay? Claro yan, not ASR. So these are other tests that you need to do. WP, uh, you need a CBC, you can request for a C-reactive protein, you can request for an X, so you need to check if there is a concomitant pneumonia, and then you need to do a to the echo to check for involvement of the, of the valve or if there is a myocarditis. You need to do a throat swab, you need to do ASO or anti dns B titers. Yun yung mga tests na gagawin. You can also request for a blood and then, alternatively, you can uh, do joint aspirate uh, kung merong severe inflammatory, parang severe arthritis, and then other tests na hindi naman available sa atin. Okay, this is what I see into the echo na helps me identify if this is rheumatic heart disease. So, diagnostic siya. So, uh, ito, on your right, is a normal valve. So this is the mitral valve and this is the aortic valve. And take note that the mitral valve has two leaf leaflet. This is the anterior leaflet, this is the posterior leaflet. So it moves towards the anterior septum and the posterior leaflet moves towards the inferior wall. Unlike here, parang joined sila at the center na we call it diastolic doming motion of the anterior leaflet. And this one, the posterior leaflet is fixed and upright. So these are uh, these are the criteria for me to say that this is a rheumatic, this is mitral stenosis of rheumatic heart disease in origin. And if you look at the, the ano, leaflet, meron siyang mga putik pute these are calcifications. And take note that the aortic valve is also affected. Hindi siya nag open widely as compared to the aortic valve on the right. Talagang it opens widely during systole ito, restricted siya. And on the center, merong ding calcification. So, uh, to the echo is helpful in diagnosis of rheumatic heart disease. So, to the echo, agad-agad na siyang malilabel na merong rheumatic heart disease. Now, the treatment is uh, benzadine penji, 1.2 million units. You need to uh, memorize this kasi these are the treatment. You can give PENV, 500 milligram twice a day. And then you can give also amoxicillin, five milligram three times a day for 10 days. Or if the patient is um, meron siyang allergy to penicillin, you can give erythromycin, but okay lang yan. So these are the secondary prophylaxis, yung PENG, 1.2 million units, that's IM, every three to four weeks mas better siya. Pero kung hindi kaya ng patient yung nasasaktan siya, pwede namang oral, but ang problem lang naman sa oral is the compliance. Kasi araw-araw niyang i-take yung PENV twice a day for like, ano, uh, a longer period of time. So, during the acute traumatic fever, ang treatment mo is just one dose of PENG, 1.2 million units, Pag yung pasyente less than 27 kilogram, pwede ng 600,000 uh, 600, units lang ang in-check. Pero pag more than 27 kilogram, yun yung 1.2 million units. One time lang yun. And then that's the primary, that's the initial dose. Then you will go to secondary prophylaxis depending on the case of the patient. Pwede ding yung initial treatment po is PENV, meaning oral. So 500 shot twice a day for 10 days. Or amoxicillin fibril three times a 500 milligram days, okay? Now, how to give a secondary prophylaxis will now matter on the case of the patient. For example, nag rheumatic fever lang yung pasyente, pero walang involvement sa myocardium, walang, um, wala siyang myocarditis, walang valve involvement. So it's a rheumatic fever without carditis. So you will just have to give a prophylaxis for five years or 21 years, whichever is longer. For example, this is a 10-year-old 
patient na nagkaroon ng rheumatic fever, then uh, if ang pipiliin mo sa 21 years old, you will give the prophylaxis up to 21 years old kasi mas mahama siya. This is 11 years as compared to 5 years. Okay, if the patient has rheumatic fever but there is involvement of the myocardium, let's say initially there was a mild MR thickening of the valve and then there is PR prolongation and there is manifestations of myocarditis. But after discharge, nawala naman yung na resolve yung myocarditis, na resolve yung first degree EB block, and then nag normalize yung regurgitation. Wala siyang residual valvular disease. So this is rheumatic fever with carditis, nagkaroon siya ng carditis, but no residual valvular disease. Ang prophylaxis mo is 10 years or 21 years, uh, whichever is longer. So if this is a patient at 10 years old, uh, you will give the prophylaxis up to 21 years old. But if the patient is like 18 years old, pipiliin mo yung 10 years after. Okay? So the last criteria for prophylaxis is a patient with rheumatic fever who had carditis but with persistent valvular disease. Then it's either you give the prophylaxis for 10 years or 40 years, whichever is longer. Or you can also give a lifelong prophylaxis. Now it's the choice of the physician to decide either 10 years, 40 years, or lifelong prophylaxis. So a clinical example of a patient who is admitted because of rheumatic fever, and then there is a myocarditis, and there is, let's say, a mild MR. But after treating the patient, umuwi siya na wala ng myocarditis, wala ng PR prolongation, and then nag-resolve trivial na lang yung MR, then okay yung patient, pinauwi mo. So ano lang siya, at this point in time, is rheumatic fever with carditis but no residual valvular disease. So you will opt to treat the patient and give prophylaxis for 10 years or 21 years, whichever is longer. Okay? Yun yung initial plan mo. After one year, nag-repeat ka ng to the echo and then nakita mo meron na siyang mild mitral stenosis, you will shift your plan. You will go to a rheumatic fever with persistent valvular disease, evident clinically or an, on echocardiography. That is yung 10 years from last attack or 40 years of age or lifelong prophylaxis. So, mag iiba siya. But on clinical presentation, doon pa lang sa pag-discharge niya, tama lang yung decision mo na explain mo sa patienting either 10 years or 21 years. But after one year, pag-check mo na merong mitral stenosis na rheumatic, then doon ka mag-change ng plan mo. It's either 40 years or lifelong prophylaxis. And how you do, uh, how to give a sika, paano yung dosage, you choose either 10G or PENV or bahala ka kung anong choice mo, depending sa gusto ng pasyente. Yay! We're done! We're done! Now the floor is open for questions. Kasi mas maganda yung questions kesa sa lecture, no? Tingin ko, maganda kung may nagtatanong. May naintitihan ba kayo? Short lang siya sa book nyo. mag exam pa naman kayo. Kailan mag-exam nyo? Good luck. Good luck sa exam, ha? Huwag kakalimutan ang mga paulit-ulit kong sinasabi at yung mga naka-red. Yan yung mga lalabas sa exam, ha? Any question? nag -iisip? October 27. It's a lucky day kasi may 7. So, papasa kayo niyan, I'm sure. Kailangan niyo mag-aral lang. May tanong? Okay. It's now your discretion kung kailan siya. Ang guideline says, uh, kung merong bagong manifestations, ipapa to the echo. For example, 3 months, Nagkaroon na naman siya ng fever, nagkaroon siya ng shortness of breath. Feeling mo, there might be an invo parang increasing valvular involvement. Papa to the echo mo siya. Pero kung let's say, asymptomatic yung patient, uh, what, no need for that year. Maybe next year, check mo siya. 
sa guidelines, hindi siya nagsasabing every year mo siya ipapatuloy. Ang guidelines talaga nagsasabi na ano, uh, if there is a new manifestations, a new event. And then this question ng doctor kung ipaparik yung today ko. Kaya nga sa ano sa di ba pag nagro-rheumatic fever sila 8 years old, walang today ko, today ko yun hanggang lumaki yung pasyente, inject lang ng inject sa puwet pa hanggang mag 21 years whichever is longer. And then, not 40 years old, for example, nag commonly yan eh, parang for example, kahan or ibang problem. Pag today ko, meron na silang mitral stenosis. Parang surprise, meron pa lang rheumatic disease. Kasi hindi tayo nagtutuloy. Mahal kasi siya, it's 3,000 pesos. And ba this is a disease of the poor. Hindi naman ako. Hindi naman o mahirap uh, hindi ka tulad sa inyo mayayaman kaya kung kayo po yung kayo every six months pato de echo pero hindi kayo ma-infect nito kasi this is a disease ayoko kaya nagpato de echo ako agad gusto kong makita kung meron akong ano RHD kasi <laughs> parang oh, I'm poor pero I'm not wala akong romantic crisis so oh, I'm rich I can be rich Meron bang question? Magtanong kayo. Dok? Yeah. Uh, um, yung RHD, Dok, can, ma can be asymptomatic, Dok, because uh, I've encountered a case po of a uh, ma pregnant mother po. Uh, she manifested uh -huh. RHD nung naging pregnant lang po siya. Yes. Common yan. Alam mo bang may patient akong mayaman na owner ng napakalaking company in the Philippines, like super sikat, billionaire, top 10 billionaire in the Philippines, rheumatic heart disease siya, severe mitral stenosis, at if I remember right, mga around 75 years old, mm -hmm. kasi nga poor siya before, and then Nagkaroon na siya ng, na-diagnose siyang merong RHD, medyo later part na wala talagang symptoms at all. And then nagkaroon lang siya ng shortness of breath, tapos easy fatigue, kaya pinato de echo. Doon na-diagnose na meron siyang severe MS. Okay? So, common yan, walang symptoms sila. Up until, let's say, maging pregnant. Kasi pag pregnant siya, Diba, tat, ang pregnancy kasi normally tumataas yung volume, si taas ang stroke volume, taas ang blood volume, taas ang BP, lahat mataas. And so, pag MS yan, diba, stenotic, eh, paano naman dadaan yung dugo? So, it will backflow to the lungs, nakakaroon sila ng congestions, and that's why it manifests as heart failure in pregnant women or in elderly. Wala talaga silang manifestation. Minsan nga ngayon, kunwari may mga application ng mga PNP, mag apply ng mga BGMP, tapos ipapatude eko sila, tapos wala, meron silang RHD. Any more question? Uh, doc, follow up, Doc. Uh, if okay. Doc, na, nalaman Doc na yung pregnant po may RHD, can she continue the pregnancy? Mahirap talaga yan. Wala kayong choice. You have to continue the pregnancy kahit ayaw mo. Kaya, di ba magda-diagnose tayo may RHD? Kaya ano, mother? Kaya ano ngayon nakala na pa-check-up? Kaya ano ngayon nakala? Yun yung pag-inisugi. Di ba talaga nirasala kasi they are poor. So, hayaan mo na yan. Wala kang choice. Meron nga, yung iba, meron na silang severe MS. Di ba, yaya, sasabihan mo, ayaw man pagbuburod, hayat talaga pagbuburod ka, delikado magburod ka. After one year nagburod, nakakaloka talaga ito. So, wala kang choice. They have to continue. Nabubuhay din naman sila, pero ano lang, babantayan lang. Kasi, um, during, panganga, during pregnancy, actually, hindi pa sila masyadong nagiging toxic. Doon sila, after paglabas ng baby, doon sila magiging, mag, doon sila magkocongest. Kasi, di ba, mataas yung volume nila. Tapos paglabas ng baby, babalik agad sa normal milieu. Pero ang daming volume, magkocongest na sila. Yun yung something amazing with pregnancy. Di ba pregnancy is a miracle? Magubuhay talaga yung mother habang pregnancy. Pero paglabas ni baby, try door na yan. Mamamatay na si mother. Ganun yan. 
But yes, they can continue the pregnancy, pero guarded lang. And you cannot give antibiotic, you cannot give prophylaxis, you cannot give any medicine during that pregnancy kasi contraindicated naman yung mga medicines, ACE inhibitor, ARB, these are contraindicated on pregnancy. Diuretic, yung furosemide, ano din, hindi din, parang bibigay ka lang kung talagang congested na, but hihintayin mong mga nakisipation. Doc, does untreated or asymptomatic tonsillitis cause RHD? There's a guideline na pag if that community has super taas ng incidence of rheumatic fever, pag mag sore throat sila, agad iya antibiotic uh, prophylaxis for rheumatic heart disease. Kaya nga, nagiging ano din, nagigkaroon din tayo ng resistance to amoxicillin kasi kahit sore throat lang, hindi naman rheumatic heart disease, agad-agad binibigyan ng antibiotic. Pero wala tayong choice pag andun sila, pag uh, crowded area, tapos tingin mo high risk tong rheumatic heart disease, kahit fever pa lang, wala pang arthritis, wala namang ibang manifestations kasi hindi naman natin nakikita yung subcutaneous nodule, yung mga ano. Kaya mahirap ano siya eh. That's why you need the Jones criteria, you need the other criteria. Minsan yung swerte ka kung may polyarthritis, pero kung nag-take sila ng incense, wala ng polyarthritis. So ang makikita mo na lang, just like two minor lang, let's say a fever and leukocytosis, tapos magpapais, o ka na lang, and then swerte mo pa throat swab ka, kasi mahal naman yung culture din. So, asymptomatic patients and um, with tonsillitis, meaning to say, may tonsillitis, pero wala kang ibang manifestations, yes, you can give a prophylaxis for RHD. Nasa guideline siya, especially if you have, you are suspecting na this patient is in a crowded area, unhygiene, yung poor hygiene, and then tanong-tanong ka sa area, marami silang, ano, marami silang uh, cases. Now, you need to do probably a to the echo. Kung meron na siyang mitral stenosis, then uh, magde-decide ka sa prophylaxis, secondary prophylaxis mo based on the clinical manifestations of the patient. Doc, ask ko lang po, ilan po ba ang average years before mag-progress from mitral regurgitation to stenosis? Wala siya, wala siyang, uh, we cannot predict. But if, if you ask me, 5 years to 10 years, hindi siya ganun naman kabilis. Um, I have patients na merong moderate mitral stenosis at 45 years old, namamatay sila from other disease, not from the severe. Hindi sila nagkakaroon ng severe mitral stenosis kahit 80 years old na sila. Hindi siya ganun. Uh, you really cannot predict kung sino yung magpaprogress to severe or sino yung kailan, how many years. Wala siya sa book. Kahit basahin mo sa book, wala siya. Kahit sa cardio book namin, hindi rin siya nakasulat. So I, I think this is... Um, Related to recurrent attacks, for example, nagkaroon na siya ng rheumatic fever pero palagi pa rin siyang na-infect, na-infect. Then the progression to a more severe form of rheumatic heart disease is mas ma-increased. Now, it also depends on the person, yung autoimmune reaction niya. Kasi kung talagang kahit once lang siya na-infect pero nag-flare up yung autoimmune disease, then... I think mataas din yung risk na magkaroon siya ng severity. But to answer your question, we cannot predict how many years magpaprogress yung stenosis or regurgitation. That's why, ano lang siya, you just probably have to monitor to the echo. Kung ako, I will do an echo every year or every time, parang less than, let's say every six months or every three months kung merong bagong symptoms. Pero kung walang bagong symptoms, every year ko lang siya ipapaeko. I like questions, di ba? Parang, parang mas maganda na papag-usapan yung disease ko my question rather than wala. Hmm? Ano pa yung tanong nyo? Doc? Yes. To clarify lang po, regarding the prophylaxis, you said that it depends on the physician if for 10 years, 40 years, or lifetime. How will you know po how long? So, um... Kung kailangan mo nang muna mag-decide kung meron siyang rheumatic heart disease, carditis, and permanent valvular disease, kunwari, 
nag fever siya ngayon. Tapos pag today ko, meron na siyang moderate mitral stenosis. Ibig sabihin, nag fever na yan before. No? Kailangan mo lang siyang i-check ngayon kung meron siyang recurrence. So how to do that? You need to do an ESO or anti-DNA titer. Pag positive yan, ano yan? Merong yung recurrence. Plus, meron siyang carditis. Plus, meron siyang permanent valve involvement. So, mamimili ka 10 years or um, uh, 40, up to 40 or time. Ang pag-decide ko kung lifetime ang pagbigay ko depending sa ano, sa pasyente. For example, na yung location nila, tatanungin mo, ano, ila, nandun, kung nandun siya sa slums, i-lifetime mo na lang yan. Lifetime mo na lang. But uh, to tell you honestly, hindi rin nakakapag-lifetime yung mga patients natin. Hindi rin sila nakaka... Ang hirap kayang magpa... Yung mga patients nga natin, kahit hanggang 21 years old lang na magpapa-inject sila, hindi na sila bumabalik after that. Minsan nga, two years lang, hindi na sila bumabalik. Kaya ano, um, I would, uh, nasa, nasa iyo yan, ik, ma, ma, malalaman mo rin yan kung kailan ka magde-decide. Uh, kung hanggang, based on your experience, mag, lalaki, tataas na kasing experience, as you ha, are handling more patients, ma, ma, ma uh, ano mo na yung experience mo. So yung concept lang doon is, you are giving the prophylaxis because you want to prevent the patient to have valve involvement. Kasi for example, nag rheumatic fever siya and then managcarditis pero walang valvular involvement. Di ba ang valvular involvement becomes permanent? Carditis, hindi pa yung permanent. But once meron siyang valve involvement, permanent na yon. So ang gusto natin, mag rheumatic fever lang siya, wala siyang carditis, wala siyang valve involvement, magbibigay ng prophylaxis 5 years or 21 years. Kasi nga, Yung up to 21 years, mataas pa yung risk niyang magkaroon ng recurrent attacks, kaya hanggang 21 years. After 21 years, career na siyang magkaroon ng recurrent attacks, kaya hanggang 21 years lang siya. So, pag rheumatic fever naman siya, na meron siyang carditis, but walang valve involvement, you also want to give prophylaxis because you don't want the patient to have valve involvement. Kasi yung carditis, nare-resolve pa siya. Ngayon, pag meron siyang Rheumatic heart disease with carditis with valve involvement. Gusto mo naman magbigay ng prophylaxis because you don't want the valve involvement to progress to a more severe form. Yun yung concept nun. So, kung tingin mo, meron na siyang may mild stenosis after one year, nag-repeat ka ng echo, biglang naging moderate, ibig sabihin, ano to? Napaka... Bilis ng progression. One year lang, naging from mild, naging moderate na siya. Ila lifetime ko yun. Or let's say, dati, mild MS lang, and then wala, walang masyadong MR, trivial MR lang. pag ko ng echo, mild MS, moderate MR na after one year. Hmm. Meron na naman siyang progression. Mabilis yung progression. Ila lifetime ko siya. So these are things na nag-help. So for example then, uh, within, di ba, uh, within 10 years, nagkaroon siya ng dalawang episodes ng rheumatic fever, recurrence of rheumatic fever, ila lifetime ko yan. So, these are things that will help you. Wala na siya, hindi na siya in explain sa book, wala nang guidelines there na these are the steps for you to decide whether you want to have it a lifeline, lifelong prophylaxis. Wala na. It's now up to you based on you. Wala namang magkakwestiyon sa iyo kung i-lifetime mo yun. But just make sure meron kang explanation behind. Hindi na, wala lang doc, sabi sa libro, eh, lifelong discretion ng doctor. Kailangan meron ka as a consultant, meron ka in your mind an explanation. For example, yung first degree AB block niya, palagi siyang may first degree AB block. Hindi na nag-resolve, baka lifelong ko yun. Or palagi siyang may walang fever, okay, okay siya. Tapos every time nagpapacheck ka ng CBC, the WBC is medyo, uh, let's say, 13. And then every time nagpaparequest ka ng ESR, mataas yung ESR, which is a sign of inflammatory condition. Baka ilife lang ko yung patient. I like questions. Parang ano, interview.
Speaking about to the echo, Doc, saan po kayo mag-enroll or nag-train? I'm interested pong matuto sa to the echo. Thank you for that question. Uh, these are the process that you have to undergo. You have to finish College of Medicine. That's uh, four years. You have to finish internship. That's one year. And then you have to take the board exam. You have to pass it. Then you have to go into residency training. Pag government, four years. Pag private, three years. After mag residency training internal medicine, uh, you have to take the board exam and you have to pass it. And then pag pumasa ka na sa board exam, apply ng fellowship training in cardiology three years in all hospital either private or government after mong matapos ng cardiology board exam ka pag pumasa ka ng board exam makakapag apply ka na for fellowship training in echocardiography one year lang yon either private or government after one year magtake ka ng board exam pag pumasa ka na ng board exam in echocardiography then echocardiographer ka na you are an internist an cardiology, a cardiologist, and an echocardiographer. Congratulations. Ano pang tanong nyo? Mahaba yung process ng pagiging cardio. Kaya nga, di ba dati yung mga cardio, matatanda na. Kasi parang, pa-practice mo na sila. So, residency, after residency, practice naman. After practice, magka-cardio. After practice, after cardio, magpa-practice muna, then mag echo then ang tagal ng proseso. Pero ngayon, yung trend is derodiretso na. Derodiretso kayong parasite sa parents nyo pag graduate nyo. <laughs> Latang-lata na yung mga magulang nyo. Any question? Oh, dali. Question pa. Meron pang tanong? Hanggang